stand up South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a thing. Revolutionary greetings uh, to all of you uh, in the continent, the diaspora. Welcome to the EFF podcast. This Friday morning, we are truly blessed. For us, it's indeed a good Friday. We've got one of the most influential men of God that is well known across the country in South Africa and the continent. He has been spreading the gospel and the faith for quite some time. But most importantly, for us, he has been seen in most of the significant rallies of the EFF since 2013, praying in all our services. Uh, this is the quintessential and powerful Reverend Ralkholel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank yes, you. thank you thank for coming and uh, for joining us. Thank you for gracing us. You're welcome to Winnie Mandela House. I know yes. you're not a stranger here, yes. but uh, welcome once more. Thank you so much for affording me this wonderful platform that uh, I know is reaching so many people, or our people in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that uh, I am given the time to to share this. That is, that is me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a privilege to be in this studio in the podcast. Thank you, Ndede Murut. How are you? It's a Yeah. So uh, the interview is really to try and shine a lot of light uh, to the person uh, in a more in-depth way than the pulpit. Yes. Mm -hmm. about Ziba, Ulimuruti, but Ziba, your voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and they know you only from your preachings. Yes. Mm. And take a journey and shine a spotlight into what is essentially a very long journey. Mm. Uh, but I thought maybe as a point of departure, I start with um, a question that this morning, uh, if God were to be riding in the breeze and met you like he met Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And maybe you didn't hide like they did. Mm -hmm. And he asked you, uh, where are you? In essence, what are the three things you would tell God that encapsulate your life that would say you have been a faithful servant mm. over your life? Yeah, that is wonderful. That is great. You know, that is taking us to the a, a call point, you know, of of ministry. Uh, if I take the very same words that God spoke in the Garden of Eden, uh, I would say the first thing is that uh, position was very important to Adam and Eve. God gave them a specific position and that position was a position, number one, of staying in his presence and a position of authority, position of taking over the dominion upon the works that God has done. And I am very touched by the point that when God is saying, where are you? Because man has moved away from the authority, the dominion. So in other words, the world is in trouble because man has lost the dominion. And my cry today, if God can ask, I say, Lord, I thank you that through the message of the Lord and the cross of Jesus Christ, I was able to, be, to find myself in a place of dominion because our lives in this world it's to dominate the hand, the works of the hands of our Father God. That's number one. So that 
whatever is happening in this world, God does not ans- asking the church, asking anybody. He's asking those who have been entrusted into the world. That's number one. Number two, the most important thing that I see that is governing also my life is the voice. The voice that said, you shall do this and then you shall not eat this one. It was a life of trust that God had in men by saying, I give you the light, the tree of life. You must live forever. This one is a tree of knowledge, accessing a knowledge that was not assigned by God. It's a, it's a bad knowledge. Then this one, it will cut your lifespan. Now, the important thing there is hearing what God is saying. Now, I spoke about authority and dominion that was given to men. Number two, if God comes today, what I will be proud of is hearing the voice of God. I hear the word. That's why uh, the Lord said, uh, uh, either to the woman or to man, that he said, who told you? It's meaning that wrong information led humanity into where we are today, into destruction, if it was not because mm-hmm. of the restoration of Christ hearing the wrong voice. Mm-hmm. So today, if God comes, the second thing will be, Lord, thank you for hearing your word as a servant of God. Mm-hmm. My life and my ministry, the greatest thing has been hearing and doing what God wants me to do. Mm-hmm. In the midst of confusion, in the midst of doctrinal doctrines in the world, in the midst of people coming with things that seems to be successful then. Mm-hmm what I see or in my generation and the generation in front of me and the generation in the past, I learned one thing that I can say it was the, it was a pillar of my life. Hearing the original weight of the Lord mm-hmm. for your life keeps you forever, keeps you in the midst of confusion. Mm-hmm. And lastly, I want to say that the Lord has, has said to Oh, to, to Adam, multiply. Mm-hmm. Multiply is the same word that Jesus said, mm-hmm. made disciples of all mm-hmm. nations. Mm-hmm. The, the, the reason but the Bible speaks about the great commission, mm-hmm. my question is, we, there must be another commission if this one is called great commission. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a great commission in the, in, the, in the New Testament, which you find it in Mark, you find it in, 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 in Matthew. Go ye into the world and make disciples. Multiply yourself into the, in general, into the, the, the people that God has created. Multiply. Multiply the character of God and the life of God, the kingdom of God in the lives of people. So the greatest thing is there must be another commission. And then I call it a cultural mandate. Mm-hmm. Cultural mandate is the same commission that said, go and multiply it mm. and replenish the earth, mm. subdue it, mm. have dominion over the works of my hand. Mm. Meaning that God created the world in an embroidered way. He did, God didn't finish what he did. Mm-hmm. did. God didn't do the mines. He didn't do the roads. God never created a mall. But within us, mm-hmm. there were malls, there were mines, there were a lot of things that we see with our eyes, but they were installed in our lives. Now, if, we in, if I obey this, go and multiply. It means that now I'm doing the will of the Father to bring out what is hidden in me. Minds were hidden. Cars were hidden. Everything that was hidden in me by God when he created me, I do it when I multiply. So as I'm saying these three things, Mm -hmm. definitely if God calls me today, I will say I'm successful Mm -hmm. to see that dominion, Mm -hmm. hearing God, and multiplying upon the face of the earth. And indeed, the... if there's a person that can 
account or the, a person's life that can speak to the numerical conversion of multiplying people in the kingdom of God is the evangelist T A Ralakhole. Amen. Um but before before we we pass there if Mudim could put the humanity of our people today on a scale mm. what would be its measure what would we weigh as a people from a humanity point of view if we were to be put on a scale god scale would what would be the measure of our humanity yeah it's it's really it's really a great concern especially if i look at the the time in which we are living because this is a reminiscent of what happened in in babylon where a king died and then belshazzar in babylon he was put as a king the very same day of inauguration mm -hmm. when he was inaugurated to be to be the leader of Babylon Belshazzar that night of celebration unfortunately there had to be a finger mm. that was writing on the wall saying mene mene tekel uparism the lord has pu put your life in scale mm. and you were found mm. this is what was found out mm. to 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 Belshazzar you were found wanting mm. And as a result, your kingdom has been taken, given to the Mede and the Persians. Mm. And it says that night, Belshazzar was die in a stampede. Mm -hmm. The kingdom was divided into the Mede and the Persian. So I could say that uh, when I look at that to myself, I can say, I thank the Lord that always I, I, I weigh myself through the word of god to make sure that i can have at least average of of the number that is needed mm -hmm. but i i see that personally i see that the in the scale mm -hmm. only if i'm found by god but with balance because the scale that they were using mm -hmm. were like balance mm -hmm. if it goes the side it falls the side mm -hmm. it means a weight Mm. But if it goes up the side, mm. one thing, mm. then if I scale, as I put a scale on my life, mm -hmm. I know that through believing in the word as the word of God is, mm -hmm. is and as the word of God is a guiding principle mm -hmm. of my life, I strive for balance. Mm -hmm. And I know that the greatest thing in, the, in us, for me in the scale, mm. I'm striking for balance. I must balance my life with the word of God, whatever. But when I look at the nations outside, I'm really saying there's a lot of wanting. Mm -hmm. I see the scale going down, going up. Mm -hmm. I see the people not, not obeying the principles that God has laid for all the humanity. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here as the servant of God to preach the 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 people back to their creator mm -hmm. to preach righteousness and the kingdom of god mm -hmm. while we are still alive mm -hmm. knowing that behind what a human achievement there is god's agenda for a person there's expectations also from our divine father mm -hmm. or if i put you here on this for instance if i take the scripture Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Belshazzar made a mistake of taking the vessels mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. They were taken by his father, mm -hmm. his, or his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. But they were supposed to be put there and be kept until post -exile, mm -hmm. exile. So, but he made a mistake that when he was drunk, mm -hmm. he took them and poured his abomination that trying to please the people that have mm -hmm. chosen him. Then God said, you are found wanting mm -hmm. because you are so much in it. 
in, in, intoxicated by, by the moment mm. of elevation that you forget who elevated you. Mm. You were found wanting. If our nation and our people can know that in every promotion in life, success, there must be a balance of the word of God mm -hmm. guiding our lives. And I could say, even if I'm not mathematical right now, but I can say I'm striving for the balance mm -hmm. when I am way in the scale of God. What are these things from a national point of view that take South Africa out of balance? I think there are quite a number of things, but I'm speaking as a man of God, as a, as a, as a pastor. Yes. One of the greatest things in the past, even though the gospel came through the vehicle that we don't appreciate, mm -hmm. but it was the gospel. Mm -hmm. And during our time, the gospel was pray, was, was, was effective. Mm -hmm. Everything was, we're trusting in God. We were praying. I mean, for instance, in the schools, we were praying. Mm -hmm. we, were, we, were, we were doing everything praying. Mm -hmm. Though things were not right for us, but Christianity or faith was mm -hmm. our, our roots. Mm -hmm. We were taught as children that faith is our root. It was like a culture that is in our blood. Mm -hmm. Even if you are not deep, but faith was not something that you could. But in our generation today, I'm, I'm touching just the first mm -hmm. thing. You go to schools where our children are. Mm -hmm. they are there's no more prayer mm -hmm. in the schools. There's no more gospel that is preached in the schools. And that's the place that is more dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because in the schools, there are a lot of things that you can expect. Mm -hmm. you, you, the, 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 the people today, when they target drugs, when they target uh, uh, witchcraft, when they target all these kind of things, they target schools. Mm -hmm. Because in the schools, there are biggest places where small children are gathered without parents. Mm -hmm. Teachers are not parents. They are there to teach. Now, if in that very kind of gathering where people, children are gathered more than home, mm. there's no God mentioned in that gathering. Mm. Our nation is in danger. Mm. Our nation in danger. Mm. And number two, you'll find that what used to be Christianity and God, to today it's too much commercialized. It's something that is commercialized. It's something about fame. It's something about celebrity. And all those things are bringing down us on the scale of God. Mm -hmm. We need to look at those things in our, gen in our nation. Yes. And it is by the grace of God that some of the meetings we still see uh, men of God opening in prayer, mm -hmm. which is something that is not popular in our time. You don't find people who are open in prayer. Mm. In prayer, it's, it's, it's substituted by moment of silence. And moment of, <laughs> mom, moment of silence, it's not a Christian. It's, it's, it's not a confession it's of faith. It's not a confession of faith. Because yes. we don't know when, when you are silent, what are you thinking? <laughs> you, yeah, you could be thinking about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but prayer is verbal. You, somebody can hear next door that what you are saying. Mm -hmm. So those are small things, but they are the basic of a nation. Mm -hmm. What do you then regard as... God's message for today? What is the teaching that is most urgent and that uh, uh, God wants us to hear and learn? You know, I believe, uh, uh, Dr. Anlozi, that the, the, the message that is urgent today is the same message of the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think the beginning is becoming the end. Because you know God, Jesus is the, big, is the Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. When God is agent about something, he's agent about the beginning mm -hmm. to be called the end. Mm -hmm. That which was given unto us as a message, it's what this, the nations need. Mm -hmm. God loved the world. He gave his only son that whosoever believes should not perish, but have life. We need the gospel of life, mm -hmm. the gospel of truth the gospel that uplift a human being, the gospel that connect a man with creator. Mercedes-Benz 
when it gives problem, it cannot be diagnosed by a Toyota. Mm. It must go to Mercedes. If we pluck out men from the, from the presence of God, man has got nothing that he can do which is strong. What the message that we need today is a message that was once preached by Nicholas Bengo mm. when he said, the slogan, what he said, back to God. Mm. The message today is that let us go back to God. Back to God. It's back to God. Hosea preached that message. Let us go to, the, to God. Mm. If it's him who has, who has caused a wound, he will heal us. Mm. Right? Le, le, uh, Nicholas Bengo came with a movement from Assemblies of God, which was a, a, a campaign that Africa back to God. Mm. We used to sing Africa back to God, mm. Africa back to God. It's time that we, our nation, we must go back to God. I hear some of the people say, this one was started in the church, this thing was started in the church, mm. this, most of the things were started in the church. Mm. Let's go back to what, where we started things. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the God who started things. That's the message. And it's easy today. God has given us a remedy, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If we can preach him alone, Christ is able to bring the world back to its origin. Okay. Now, I'd like us to go to 1955. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Muruti is born. Uh, what was uh, what was the life like 1955 when you were born what type of a family and uh, the conditions where you were born amen that one it's very emotional mm. it's very emotional because after more than after more than 68 years uh, I can still say uh, 1955, 1990, it's it was a preparation for today. Mm. It's a pre it was preparation for, mm. for 19, uh, 2024. Mm. My birth, among all other things that I will never forget, is that in 1955, it was the time when my uh, our, our fathers, our mothers were getting a pass book which was Malan. It was called Malan. Mm. The past book that you put it here. Mm. And during that time, what is important in the family was I was born. Mm. And when I was born, what is important, it was that I was born by a blind woman. Mm. My mother was blind since 1933. I was born by a woman that did, ne but that did not see me until she died. Mm. She only knew my voice. That's why, to me, it's simple to hear the voice of God, even I don't see him. Mm -hmm. Because I, my mother never saw me. He only knew my voice. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not a problem if I don't see God. Mm -hmm. He speaks in jail. I don't even want to see him because I, maybe I will die when I see him. <laughs> but his voice is enough because that's how I was born. Mm -hmm. My mother never knew my voice. I'm born by a woman who did not see mm -hmm but a wonderful woman who led me into a very good way. And mm -hmm. my father was also alive mm -hmm. when I was born. And uh, it was difficult for my mother to bring me up. Mm -hmm. But that, it was, I think it was destined by God mm -hmm. to have a special passion for women. Mm -hmm. Because I became a, 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 a stick that mm -hmm. led my mother when I was I started to be, to walk. I was leading my mother every place. Mm -hmm. I never enjoyed to be a young person mm -hmm. until I went to school. And I went to school very late, around the age of 10. Mm -hmm. Because my mother could not go anywhere without me. Mm -hmm. I was leading my mother. Were you the first born? I was last. I was the last. The last born of how many? We were all 10. In total? Total. So oh. mama became blind... Uh, do you know what turned her blind? It was, um, it was, they call it small box, mm -hmm. small box. That thing that we call small box. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like, 
something coming out of your face and then mm. it, it comes water. Mm. It killed many people during that time. I see. That smallpox. So yeah. it affected the eyes. I see. Some say survived. Even today, those who survive, you'll see them with their faces. Yeah. Like, yeah. Smallpox. Yeah, smallpox. And as a last born, you're saying that majority of your childhood responsibilities were to help mama go by. Was, was to, tell, to take mama everywhere we go. Well, in Elisa DC. I could not even do that mm. because now I had to mm. I had to mm. Baba, they were doing their job as mm. normal, but I was, I was, I was, uh, I was after my mother mm -hmm. every day. That was that was a twenty-four mm -hmm. hour job for me. So ten years, Ukadile A. At ten years, ten years, Ukadile A, grade one, A, and uh, were you not old in that class to the rest, or it was normal? No, it was it wasn't so much normal, mm. but it was circumstances that caused mm -hmm. me that. So, in the school class, w didn't it become a challenge for learning that you were late? No, it was not a challenge because I was I was a joker. I was I was a leader of everybody. I see because I came with that you know authority that mm -hmm. I make everybody to 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 laugh when i'm sitting I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a, i was a person who so you were able to joke even I, about your situation, situation so no one could offend you offend if they raised this even if you are coming you are new in the school mm -hmm. they have to bring it to me and then i say something they laugh mm -hmm. and then that's how was my character mm -hmm. so i never had a challenge of anything in my in my upbringing because mm -hmm. i was i was a person who do a lot of jokes and mm -hmm. make everybody must laugh when mm -hmm. it's in my presence. So primary school was in Paris. Was in Paris. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the I know that you are one of the preachers that is extremely passionate about education. Mm -hmm. uh, is this where that comes from in these primary years? Uh, was the passion for education planted in your schooling years? And if so, are you able to lead us to what is it that made you really passionate? Was it the teachers? Was it uh, the prospect that education gives something? What were your primary school years like? Ed, starting from, from the first po point, my passion did not come from school. Mm. It comes from the delay. The delay of being schooled, schooled. made you passionate about Passionate, school. because I would sit outside and ask questions about certain things and nobody answered me. For instance, I would sit down and think about, remember I went to school during the Apollo 11 somewhere there mm -hmm. and I was already old. I see. I was I would sit outside and look at the moon and ask oh, how did they mm. how did they manage to Arrive. go to the moon and how what what must I do to mm -hmm. be also walking on the moon mm -hmm. and all those kind of work, questions questions were were questions because I went to the school too late so some mm -hmm. of the questions I I had nobody was able to answer ask me. <laughs> so I would answer I will ask my mother and my mother will say no no, don't ask yourself those things. But now people always have a perception that how Lumurudi, like you have become as a preacher, a pastor, that maybe even when you were 10 years and 11 years, you there were already signs. You did it was your childhood all those things where you sort of uh, weird i was very open just like other people but mm -hmm. my problem came from this very same mother because mm -hmm. he, he kept on telling me that i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a, I'm a pastor let me tell you let me speak it in my language mm. when i was born in 1955 the woman the women who were there during my birth they gave me libido ananias mm. and they said after that the rest of his life. I see. So I grew up, my, my brothers calling me Muruti, and it, I, I didn't like that. I tried to run away. Why do you think the, the midwives did that? No, they, this, they, they prayed before I was born. Mm -hmm. They prayed 
that my mother should not have because there was no family planning that we have today. Mm. It was the prayer that I must be the last one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They were praying that I must be the last one. And it's because reason, you were number 10. Hey, I, actually I'm number 9 because the one who tried to come after me he died. I see. Maybe they, those people they, they praying a wrong prayer. They said this must be the last one. Mm. And then they gave me a name and say and as a result we give him to God. I see. Because if we give him to God he will be the last one. Hey. So they made a mistake. So you grow up with the burden that you must be muruti muruti and i didn't like it why i didn't like it because the, the type muruti at that time was somebody who was too serious sitting in the house and not laughing and i was a person who liked who to, liked to joke. mingle with people joking <laughs> laughing and I, when i look at the type of muruti i saw someone who must be serious for 24 hours I said, no, <laughs> it's i will be never i can't be serious for 24 hours but where where, where was your family uh attending religiously a church my father was an elder of apostolic faith mission i see so hired nelima nelima afm nelima afm mara pele asa aso ba deep into polo so like so baruti baruti nelima to pass yes yeah yeah le ha dutsi mani u dutsi a thotse fela ena ra dumelo etsa le rata Yes. I was imagining myself sitting like a machine mm. and all those things. I said, no, no, I don't fit here. Hmm. So how did the calling for you well, in a journey like that? I mean, you've got this story <laughs> of an amazingly and amazingly interesting birth. People are praying people say we dedicate this child to god much like uh, samuel mm. because samuel is hannah's child mm. and hannah or how come pawan i'm going to dedicate this child to mm. you and samuel sort of grows up under a priest mm. but for you there's no priest mm. uh, how did the calling come Well I think during that time what was this moment no, which there, there's a significant moment mm -hmm. that I'll never forget the significant moment came in a form of loneliness that I could not interpret hmm. that was around the 70s now also this is post yeah, high school it's, yeah it's post now I was waking Okay let me reverse a bit i want okay. to exhaust okay schooling years yes. so primary and high school education you were not preaching you were not those I things of sick. seo all right let mm -hmm. me explain what i normally don't i don't say in some of during that time the only thing that i did in preaching was i was a jehovah's witness mm. and i was doing what they do delivering papers to people giving door to door door to door kingdom of jehovah that's it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uno si muruti ah it, it was it was it was something for every disciples mm -hmm. of, of razels in the call mm -hmm. so we were taught how to give people. so how do you, how do you meet jehovah's witness when the dead is in afl they used to come to schools i see they were they were target in schools mm -hmm. and i happened to be in a school where they have they have a center Mm -hmm. Though they didn't preach to us, they just give us the treasures. Mm -hmm. And those treasures, they got hold of me. And then you completed matric. I never completed matric. By, by that time, if you have stand, JC, standard six and yeah. JC, you were very highly educated. So you got your JC, and I got my work. I got my standard six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did you start working? I started working in Johannesburg, in George Cook. around George Cook. Mm. I was a, I was a, I was a clerk. I see. With my standard six, I was a clerk uh, in in the market, big market then between George Cook and Sydney. Mm -hmm. From 74. What what was the market called? What were the products? Was it fruits or fruits fruits from all over the country they mm -hmm. come to Sydney mm -hmm. and it's distributed, distributed to, yes. yeah, to other markets. So you were a clerk. I were a clerk then. Mm -hmm. I was a clerk. And then from there And from there that's when I I fell back into into a, 
a reckless life, drinking and forgetting even the watch tower thing. Mm-hmm. And then the God had to come. Mruti was drinking alcohol. Drinking heavily. Mm-hmm. Heavily. Yeah, heavily. Heavily drinking. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I know all kinds of beer hall, beers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would tell, tell, that, tell everybody mm-hmm. what kind of beer. Hmm. Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker jeans. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talk about uh, dry jeans. You mm-hmm. talk about uh, all kinds of beers and mm-hmm. all this combo tea. Mm-hmm. But it was a short period, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And was it because Uno Sebeta, then you had a little bit of money? I had then money. You were young. I was young. I had mm-hmm. money. And I was far from my parents now. Mm-hmm. They were now in Kwakwa by that time. I see. They were far. So what moved them from Barais to Kwakwa? We were moved by we were we were moved by say the apartheid system mm-hmm. because you could do not you, you could not go anywhere in the town and work without coming with a letter from homeland. I see. So the nearest homeland, if you are a Sutu, you had to go to Kwakwa. If you are Venda, mm. Venda. If you are Kosa mm. and and the Putatswana. Mm-hmm. So I went to Kwakwa because there was no way to go. So you your family then found a place there. Yes. Then wakwana utola pasa ya urutlo sebe. Utlo sebe. Then I came in Joburg. I came to Joburg to work. So in these Joburg years, what was it? Was it uh, were you in your early twenties? Yeah. I see. Yeah. I was in my early twenties, and and then the the girls were you good with them? I wasn't. Okay. Honestly. I wasn't. You were just drinking. I was drinking, <laughs> but I wasn't. I mean, you are a very handsome man. Uh, I know I know you before the wrinkles. But the camel the next half went and then right person who's not like me who's not drinking mm-hmm. did you meet mama before uba muruti or after before before yes before uba muruti before uba muruti. so was it during these years uh, before the calling yeah that you met Mama. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Oh, How did you meet her? It was simple. I met a, a, a girl, and then I went to his home, her home, and I look at brothers, I look at the fathers, I look at the life of that family. I went to my mother and said, I see this, then this. He said, no, that's good. Mm. And then my, my, my brothers and my sisters, they went there, they confirmed that she's a good girl, the family is fine. And then I, I married my wife. And uh, was it during this time when you were working at City Deep? Yes. But where did you meet her? Kwakwa. I see. Yeah, during, you know, during, during the... Hey, during, yeah, outfit. you come with a lot of money. So yeah. <laughs> so, but, so but, but, <laughs> but what did you say to her as the first thing? I don't know. I was, I was drunk. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she's the one to, to to remember that. But how did you know this is this is love? This but it was. Passion. I can't was. explain. But the, 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 it was. Do you remember the first place where you met? I met with her at a place at her home. The, I know the brothers first, and then I visited oh, with the you're brothers. Visiting the brothers. In my intention was to see her. I see. Then I grab her from that. Yeah. <laughs> and then she. She accept, She had to accept. She no? had to accept, though she 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 was afraid of me because I was I was I was I was I was feared by a lot of people in the area. Why were they scared of you? Because I was now drinking. Mm. I was no more like that. Were you violent? Violent. I was violent. Yes. No better. Make it better. Make it better. Make it beat you. Make it bold. Bold. Make it better. I was even fighting for other people who are mm. not, who are, who could not fight for themselves. And but did, you were not in a gang, Mm-mm. just general, generally, uh, yeah, beer yeah. brawl. Yeah, yeah. So onotseba laka di mpa maka po di tebi laka po di kick. And even the and the okapi. Oh, oh, you stabbed people. You know, onotseba laka di scar di okapi and all those things. But Murudi, you never took someone to ICU. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, stabbing is a yeah, but, was a thing I know. I mean, of the of the time. Yeah, so it was, you, you it could was, operate an ogabi. Where two or two what your hands, you know. <laughs> so in a sense, Toti. Toti, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And you married. And her. because uh, because I had a little bit of soweto to style, you know. Mm, all because my, of city all, Yeah, all, all my working here, all the mm. weekend I was a soweto, so mm. I was Toti from Soweto. So once you are from Soweto, they are scared, scared of you. Mm -hmm. So this brings me then to this uh, question about the calling. I mean, I, I, I was saying earlier that I imagine there are two radically different ways in which we could think of it. But if there are more, you'll tell us. One is is like the sort of Pauline experience. Paul. Mm. He's on his way mm. to kill Christians mm. and uh, he's hit by lightning, loses eyesight. And that is the epiphany, the moment of his calling. Mm. And then he's called radically in a radical direction. Mm. So mm. he must now work for the thing he used that to is, oppose. Yes. But the other one was this instance of uh, Samuel. Samuel... Mm. He's already growing in the church. And then he's an altar boy. He's a servant to Eli. And then meets the calling. And when he hears the calling, it actually sounds like the voice mm. uh, of the priest. Until the priest says, okay, next time you hear this voice, Do this. you must say, your servant is listening. Mm. What was your experience? I think my my experience is a little bit it's 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 little bit closer to Pauline's experience, mm -hmm. though I was not uh, opposing the church. Mm -hmm. Yes, but my lifestyle mm. was really against God, mm. and uh, sometimes against even the preachings. Mm. Remember, I was from another religion mm -hmm. or maybe sect, mm. and uh, now I'm. I'm back to, to the world now. Mm. I know how to blaspheme what, mm. you know, what people are doing. And even Christians were scared of me because I knew the verses. Mm -hmm. I would argue with them on my on that state. Mm -hmm. So my salvation came like Paul because I remember exactly that at home they were either expecting me to come with a coffin mm. or something to happen. That mm. was like that, my my. My life was so reckless that it was not going to be a scary thing mm. that I come with a coffin or something. Ish. But in the same time, I encounter Christ mm. miraculously that I was trying to mock somebody. He knocked me mm. with the gospel. And then I say it's like Paul's, Paul's calling because when I got saved, even where I was staying, people were, were still running away when they see me. Hmm. They thought, no, I'm lying. I, it's a way of killing them. So you you got saved? Mm. Tell us about that in a little bit more detail. Uh, shortly, the Lord came to me very simple mm -hmm. because somebody came to me and just tell me straight, he told me straight about accepting Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then I was laughing at him, and be, I, I was, uh, by that time, I was an uh, artisan mm -hmm. in the factory. We, we built this Sassol fan, the Sassol in Secunda. Mm -hmm. We started from scratch, so mm -hmm. I was, uh, we were an artisan. Mm -hmm. So we were doing the same job, but the other one was doing this. So we were mm -hmm. always together working. I see. Then I didn't know that this guy from KZ is a color artist, mm -hmm. was saved. He started to, talk, to tell me about straight about Jesus. Mm. But I was laughing at him. I was even giving him more verses. Mm. Until one day he gave me a paper, the tract. Then the, the tract, when I read it, it struck my life. Mm. Cried for two weeks. What was on it? It was just written, help from above. And then the verse was saying, God will wipe away our, their tears and there will be no sorrow anymore. Why it had knocked me that like that, I don't know. But I was just crying. Asking, when will I, where is this place? Because mm. I want to be here. Whether it was, it was heaven or it was here on earth, but mm. I wanted a place where my tears will be wiped away and I will live in peace. Mm. And then when I told him, then he said, yeah, you will get it here on earth. 
that he started to to give me some verses and pray for me. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got saved. So there was all along an emptiness yes. that existed in you that you were not aware of. It I was aware of. Mm-hmm. I've been trying many things I was aware of. Mm-hmm. But now because of the re- background of where I come from, mm-hmm. I was criticizing too many things, mm-hmm. including salvation. Mm-hmm. I was criticized, but I found a place where I could not criticize anything, but to surrender to this one, mm-hmm. if it can give me peace. I see. And then when I got safe, that same day, afternoon, three o'clock, I was preaching. Hmm. And I did not even know the Bible the right way. I was using the hymn book. And whatever it speaks about Jesus, I use the hymn book. What, what, why, why, why would you, why did you have the passion? I mean, where the priest sit and then he wants to sit with the priests. It happened <laughs> like that to me. For you, how do you explain that? I don't know. Because in the morning when, when that man tells me that I'm now saved, mm-hmm. I'm a child of God, mm-hmm. I'm going to heaven, my sins are forgiven. The afternoon I was repeating what he said. Mm, to others to the others I see so when they ask me more questions mm-hmm. I refer them to that man I, I want to push you a bit Muruti about this life South Africa has high levels of murder mm. I mean in a year over 20,000 people get murdered meaning uh, not they don't die in accidents or because mm. of disease they are murdered mm. Mm. and when you zoom in it's this life of violence of ogapis of guns uh, in beer halls in and majority of those people by a scary margin is young men mm. and young black men meaning Anania see uh, before salvation. If you were to look back and you had a, a way to go and speak to that young man, what would you tell him? A message that maybe parents today who are like your mother expecting that their sons anytime angangena in a coffin. Yeah. What is this message that will knock sense into the life of that young man? What would you say if you were to travel back into that time? See Ananias, Ralkholel, mm. in that behavior, everybody's scared of him, two ogapis in a pocket, um, beating up people and all those things. What would you say? Butata bahau ki ing ene. This is your problem, and this is how you must resolve it. Yeah. Uh, I think that the, 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 the biggest problem, uh, it's emptiness, was emptiness to that man, Ananias. I was empty. I was lonely. And uh, I did not know, I did not have a foundation, a good foundation of, walking in the things of God. And I did not know how to live among other people. I did not know that as fellow as fellow people in the world, we are created in the image of God. Mm-hmm. I did not know that somebody exists who love us all, mm-hmm. who, who love the world. I thought that life was survival. Mm-hmm. I thought that I thought like that I was in a jungle. Mm. where everybody's surviving for himself. Now, that's why even in my deepest life, uh, pro- uh, deepest way of my life, I did not even think there's anybody who can help me. Mm. All the other mistakes, I was trying to help myself. And the more I help myself, I go deeper, deeper, deeper into the things of the world. Mm. Until I realize one word that Jesus loves you. Mm. I have been hearing that a lot, but mm. it is that word that struck my life, mm. that it's there is and it's somebody who loves me. Mm. And that me was more than my outside. <laughs> it knocked my spirit inside. It dealt with that vacuum mm. of my soul. Mm. 
that vacuum was already filled when I heard that somebody loves mm. me. My tears was not the tears of sorrow, mm. repenting from sin. Mm. Was the tears that tells, I never had somebody who speak into my spirit saying, mm. I love you that I can give anything for your life mm. to be where you want it to be. I was chasing that. So if I look at the people who are living today, that's why it makes me to preach the gospel even at my age. Mm. I cannot sit down because I know what they want is what I wanted. See. People are empty. Mm. And the world does not offer what can satisfy the soul of man. Mm. The, the, the earth offers what we, we, what we want, mm -hmm. but not what we need. But I still emphasize that the gospel is the answer for humanity. It's not really, I'm not talking about religion, but mm. the gospel is the answer for humanity. It, it goes into that vacuum and close. Mm. And when that was close, I never thought of hating anybody mm. since that time. I never thought of hating any man. Mm. And I was, I don't, I cannot even count how many people, I don't know who hate me. If there's somebody who hate me, it might be, he might not be known. I don't, I don't even recognize him. Mm. But I, I started to love mm. everybody, love people because they are my fellow human beings created in, the, in God's image. Mm. I differ with people, but I started to develop love. Mm. My motive for preaching, my motive for being a man of God, is the love of God that flows to my neighbor. And I want to see my neighbor receiving what I have. The calling. Yes. Did you hear a voice? I mean, being saved is one step. Yes. But now saying, I'm going to leave artisan I want to go jobs and all of that, the job that you were doing to move into being Murudi. Mm. What happened? Yeah. It was 1978. Mm -hmm. It was in the evening, 8 o'clock. I had a voice in the church, not in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. God saying to me, I did not know it was God, but the people who were around there, when I cried and tell them, what I see, they explained to me. Mm -hmm. God came to me in a form of a voice from above. Mm -hmm. And the hand pointing me here on the forehead, mm -hmm. saying, I'm calling you to my work the rest of your life. When God said that, I remember what my grandmother used to say. They combined together. I knew without any shadow of doubt mm. that it was God. To me, it was like everybody was hearing the voice mm. because it was so loud. And we were in the, in the, in the gathering. Our gathering could be around 100 people mm. praying together. It was so loud that I thought everybody could hear that. And mm. suddenly, when I opened my eyes, I realized that no, these people are praying very hard. Then I stopped the meeting. I asked them, did they hear what was said to me? They didn't hear. Then I explained to them, the one who was, who was long enough among us in the Lord, he stood up and said, this man is called by God. Mm. Who's that? It, it's Mestin Nobela. Mm. He's Nobela. He was a man, a Tsonga. Mm. A Tsonga guy. Who was with me. Where was this? It was in Sekunda. Mm. It was in the Sekunda. Kereke. Kereke. In a Greke, you are thinking in a Sekereke, officially in the gathering of believers. Home sale. Home sale and Swinky Runa at the job. Yeah. Which started in the factory in Sekunda, I see. Then it went where we were, you used to put up. They I used see. to call it a hostel. Yes. Then it went there. I see. And we gather more than 350 people mm. who were worshiping there. And then we didn't have a pastor. We were calling pastor to come in. Preach and we give them money. And then what happened after that? Did you you hear the voice? Novella says, this is a calling. 
was there a moment where you had to be ordained? Yes, after that, uh, I started now to hear the voice of, to, 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 Even to, more. to recognize that voice. Mm -hmm. After he said that, then I started to recognize the voice. You could now distinguish it yes. from other things. From the other things. Yeah. And that's what has been leading me until, until where I am today. Okay. But then how, how do you, tell us about that transition. That, uh, yes. From the voice to uh, going, for instance, to Bible school. <laughs> yeah. This, so this is what happened after the voice. Mm. I didn't immediately go to Bodaba. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I started to practice the Bible mm -hmm. and the voice. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to see God doing the things that he's saying. Mm -hmm. Exactly the way he will tell me. And then I will read the Bible and base what I hear in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I started to do exactly the things that I was supposed to do in helping people. Such as what? Such as if I'm sent to a person, God tells me that person need need help. Otherwise, he's going to he's going to, for suicide. Mm. I will go and preach to that man, mm. and he will repent, mm. and then we bring him to the church. Sometimes God will tell me, "Pray for that man; he's, he's sick." I will mm. pray for the person; he will get sick. We bring him to the church. Mm. Sometimes I will be sent to a house where a person is dying. Mm. I will enter there, and then I will find a person is dying. I'll pray for pray for the person. And sometimes I will be, I will be going to a service, and I will instruct it, just pray this prayer, because I was still here. Mm. Then I'll pray the same prayer, and the result will be the same. So, in a way, uh, you are already um, privileged with uh, a gift, and the gift is working. You, wh why, why go to Bible school? Yes, it's what the church said. Uh, now this is AFM. It's my church. When I, when this thing now was known mm. among the Christians, I see. Here is Paul. Here is Saul. Mm. Now is Paul. Mm -hmm. And I was working there at the corner and re delivering people from mm -hmm. problems. And then, I, when I finish, I send them to the church. Mm -hmm. And then I continue working. I continue working and sending people to the church. When I'm around Sunday, I come to the church, I sit among the people mm. and I listen. Then the, the word goes everywhere. About I see. Who I am, until the pastor, I went to the pastor by then, I, my, the pastor of the AFM mm -hmm. at home. Okay, before I go there, I, uh, I went to home with a new experience. Mm. Home being Kwa. Kwa, kwa mm -hmm. And my wife heard about this. Ah. My mother was blind, heard about this. Mm. My brothers. Luckily, there was a tent of Reinhard Bonke. In Kwa. That came. I see. Coincidentally. I, coincidentally, then I sent them there. Mm -hmm. I, I paid money for them to go every day. For your family. My family. Yes. Then that's where they got saved. Then the next time when I came after two, three weeks, the whole family, including my wife, were mm. saved. They were all saved. So you go to the local pastor now. Now the local pastor, mm -hmm. I explained that God is saying this and saying mm -hmm. this. What must be that? What what is what could be that? Mm. Said God has called you. Mm. Then I started to realize there's a calling. Mm -hmm. Now it took us again time for him to check what calling. And all those kind until I went to the meetings from this one to this one until I went to the meeting of highly you know experienced people mm. in the church. They confirmed that I was called. Mm -hmm. Then I was given sometimes just to pray in the church. Mm. Then they could see me praying, and they mm. could. Take, I don't know how do they feel how, mm -hmm. how what the Lord said, but they felt that it was an extraordinary, extraordinary mm. prayer. I remember in one incident. The church was packed over 1,000, including the wives and the mm -hmm. all, all people. It was a conference. I was sitting among the people. Mm. And there was somebody who was supposed to pray for the sick, who was known. Mm. And then the person did not make it, uh, come to the church. Mm -hmm. And then my pastor said, there's somebody who said he's called. Let's call him. Let him pray for the sick. Mm. 
I was shivering because I was, I've never done that in front of people. Mm. I remember only saying to the people, close your eyes. And from there, there was a holy pand- pa- pandemonium mm. where I saw people standing from wheelchairs, open their eyes, delivered from all kinds of ailment. Things was happening. Now, that thing put me in, 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 in advantage of the people who had money said, no, we will sponsor him, let him leave the job and come. I see. That's how I left the job and I came to the ministry. But many people in the charismatic Christian faith often do not calculate their way into a Bible school, for an example. I mean, you went to Bible school, you went to college. Uh, why, why after the first qualifications, you still insisted on becoming more and more educated, including going to study theology? What is this passion? And how do you see this relationship between now and how? And your gift and the fact that you must still do the hard work of studying. I think I think study was my passion mm. long before I got saved. But when I got saved, then I saw the challenge was bigger than bigger than I ever I ever realized before. Mm. Why? Because my gift was taking me to the place where I cannot be sustained by the little that I have. Mm. Little knowledge. knowledge. Okay. I realized that I'm, um, for instance, I grew up in Kwakwa where everybody's just talking Sutu mm. and then you know only one culture. Mm. Now you must know that I felt in my heart that I'm called into cross cultural mm-hmm. cultural communities. Mm-hmm. I felt that I'm called for universities, even to preach, because mm. I, I did a lot of ministry in universities long before I before I was known in other places. Mm-hmm. I was preaching in universities, preaching in the schools. Now the challenge came when I realized that I'm preaching to people who are mm-hmm. studying. And some of them, they are of my age. Why don't I study? Mm-hmm. And uh, also, I, 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 I saw the future. That it was so bright that I, it's going to take me across the world. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that for this gift to be more strong, Mm. and to carry me for long. I need to study so that I can be able to navigate through different different generations mm-hmm. because it's good that I'm preaching, but generations change. Things mm. are changing, customs and manner and all these things. They change in every generation. So my cry was, I don't want to preach to these people of my age only and die when mm. I, when 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 I, I think I have finished the job. Mm. I want to preach even to the next generation. And education was important for Education that. was important to take me there. Mm. For instance, one of the things that I measured with at the, at the, at the university was Miss Mission, um, uh, Urban Mission, mm-hmm. and also Diaspora Mission. Mm-hmm. Because I felt that I must preach in outside the countries, in people all over the world, and also preaching in other countries different cultures of the world. So I had to do things like cross-cultural communications, how to preach in this kind of people. Mm. I had to do the religions of the world to, mm-hmm. to, to, to be able to be ready to preach to all kinds of mm. people, traditionalists and all those kind of people. So is this an attitude in your view that is shared amongst young preachers, um, pastors, is education understood like this? It's In what, the way that you are. Yes, we, it's what we are, we are preaching to our young pastors and generations mm-hmm. nowadays. What about your school? I, I encourage them to, to go to schools. And I don't, I didn't say to them, they must. I started by going. When mm. I was 40, when I was 45, Years old, I was, I, 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 I was, I was doing my honors at mm. the age of forty-five, and by that time, I've traveled with the biggest tents in the country, up to twenty-five thousand seat a tent. Mm. I've traveled across the world, mm-hmm. but I came down. Mm. I came back home and I attended a, 
to do my 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 honors and then i did my uh, i did my 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 masters and then i continue with at the universities to write thesis mm. on certain topics mm. and you have books uh, and then i've written eight books mm. including two mm-hmm. with different languages another one is released mm. it's released today is it released today mm-hmm. it is printed today mm-hmm. in swahili in swahili in swahili so that different language speakers can access it yes we have yeah. portuguese we have french mm. french we have we, we are now doing uh, swahili mm-hmm. and all my books are going to be interpreted uh, translated to swahili the story behind the glory chronicles of an african apostle and evangelist retropila faith for the midnight hour the final hour the going church for the coming lord the art of spiritual warfare evangelism in the last days multitudes in the valley of decision those are some of the books that you've written yes, yes. yes. i want to go now to the ministry mrudi mm. you start uh, this journey but you mention figures that were important for your mentorship bengu Ngiti. these are also heavy names mm. uh, and then Reinhard Bonge uh, can you just tell us in what way they contributed uh, to your development in the ministry yes it was it was it was it was a divine order that i met those three people mm. yes i think i wouldn't make it if i didn't i wouldn't make it up to where i am if i never had those three legs mm. they are they are they are the, the pillars of my life that the bengu for instance is what was from another it was in another denomination mm. in assemblies of god but his fame the time i came to the ministry mm. reached the point where there was no more de- it was, he was no more denominational pastor yes but he was a figure in south africa mm. and even people were counseling us teaching us about him mm. we were mentored by him not him mm. by those who were mentored by him mm. and we we listened to those who were mentored by him mm. telling us how did he responded mm. into things how did he responded in, in challenges mm-hmm. how did how does did his success came how did he conduct revivals in different cities of africa mm. how did he responded to the calling of overseas and also coming back to his local church and be effective mm. and all those things they formed part of how my ministry was operating for instance i didn't even know the preaching yakabam bengu i know him personally but not preaching that but i only i was only told when he came to the crusade mm. and that day they brought all the cripples all the in, the import type mm. of sicknesses that i imported i know where ubabu mm. bengu was told that hey when he was at the garage they told him that he, they didn't know him they mm. said hey ubengu yaza kugcela abantu la and akugcela abantu abanga amangikwazi uhamba abanga mboni Babu Bengu was spiritually that thing touched him mm-hmm. and he never entered through the door that is normal mm. he entered through the curtains maka vela nje wabuza one question kizwile ngise feel station ukuthi nifuna ubengu ningifunelana wathula wathi ningifunelana on the third time maka when he said ningifunelana He jumped from the platform he took a crippled boy who was born mm. like this and he ran with the boy see ningifunela and threw the boy on the ground the boy ran away the whole church was under pandemonium people were standing from the wheelchairs the blind were screaming and then was he came from the the, the ground he went through the same door what ningifunela no puma he went out that was a crusade never forgotten Where was this crusade? I don't know. I was told the oh, it story. Was a story. It was a story but that changed my whole life. Mm. Uktu babu bengu nimfunela. 
So <laughs> when I did my crusade, that was ringing in me. And by the grace of God in 1980, mm. 1981, I went to him. And then I saw him, how he's doing the conferences. Mm. Little did I know that I will be ministering in his big conferences now. Later in life. Later in life. So I told him who I am mm. because he didn't know me, but I, I had all stories. Mm. He said, Mfanawam, you must keep what you have for your generation. Mm. And then he left. Mm. I, I left to the crusade. Mm. And I saw great things happening. Just the word. Mm. Babibing was so influential to my life in a sense that his anointing was also the anointing that God put upon the preacher Tinkiti. Mm. He received the laying of hands from Bengo. Mm. So when I came to AFM in 1979, I bumped with it into a tent and the tent was Richard Tinkiti. Mm -hmm. And that's where he put me to be helping as an usher. And in that two weeks, it was enough. Mm. It was like the whole life mm. of seeing him, the true man of God who can talk to God. Mm. How he pray, prayed mm. changed my life. How he loved people changed my life. How he reacted to the younger one changed my life. How he re reacted to the older people. Mm. How he handled his family, especially his wife changed my life. How he respected leadership changed my life. Kings, the stories of how he behaved before the kings, the influence, such a great influence in his, among the kings, mm -hmm. such influence among the, the, the whites, different, uh, uh, different colors of different people. Mm -hmm. It changed my life. And how he ministered to the people he changed my life with almost everything that I've seen. And it was not only uh, that 1989. It was until that 79. It was until I pray God, let it be the person who ordained me. So Babungidi ordained you? He ordained me to be a pastor. Mm. Reinhard Bonke? Reinhard Bonke became our father. The only, the, the, the other connection was when Reinhard Bonke came to South Africa from Germany, the first time when he saw miracles happen in his life, it was when he invited Nkiti. Mm. He saw the boldness of a Zulu man mm. praying for the people, crippled without fear mm. and boldness, faith in God. Mm -hmm. And Bonke caught that spirit. He started Christ for all nations. And then Christ for Nation came to my home. My whole family came saved. Mm. And when I was sitting in the, in the, in the church of Christ for Nation, that's when God spoke first time the ministry of tents mm -hmm. in 19, to, you. to me in 78, saying, you see this, you are going to travel with tent si or size of this. It was a 10,000 seater, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is what you are going to do. Hmm. And then from there, I followed Reinhard Bonke. Every crusade, I was there from 78. And then I attended his crusade, and I attended the seminar, and he knew me, he gave me some opportunities of ministering somewhere until, until, until Nigeria's crusades, the Millennium Crusade, I was there sitting with him, staying in a hotel. And then even his funeral, even, until his his, what you call, not funeral, his memorial service. Mm -hmm. I was there when he was celebrated a few mm -hmm. days before he was buried. Mm -hmm. That's where, how I know Reinhard Bonke. The impact of Bonke in my life cannot be measured by words now. Mm -hmm. But it was so great. Gospel fire starts uh, 89? It started uh, 87. 1987. Yes. This is now your ministry. My ministry, which was seconded by AFM, mm -hmm. approved that I can have a ministry, still having credentials of AFM. But uh, as an evangelical movement? Evangelistic ministry. I see. Then but I, you, you did get stationed in a church before. before I that. was a pastor from 
1980 until 1987. Until until 1987, I was a church pastor. I started a church. Mm-hmm. I built a church. I built a Kukai. 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 I in a called place in a place called Zeki. Mm-hmm. I was there. And was it doing well? Very, very. So very. why leave it? The burden for humanity, mm. the cry for humanity, the cry to go full time in in this original calling of evangelism. Because pastoral was my church. Mm. You could not be anything, just pastor. Mm. You do crusade, come back pastor. So I wanted to focus my whole life to evangelism. 1987, where, where was your first crusade? Ah, uh, 87, my first crusade was here in Dennisville. Dennisville. Dennisville is in the is in Free State, huh? Yeah. Dennisville. Yeah. Yeah. Next to yes, yeah, go 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 go. Yes, I see. Yeah. What was the size of the tent? Uh, already by that time it was quite big. Mm. It was nine nine to one thousand. I see. Yes. I know that uh, these were very difficult times. Black on black violence. Eighty nine, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine, ninety, up to let's say. 96 uh, particularly in the in the val mm. uh, and you were operating not only in those areas obviously but across the country uh, just take us through this phenomenon of the tent mm. uh, community to community yes i believe that uh, the grace this grace of god was sufficient mm mm-hmm. Because it was a scary moment, scary moments, and one of the thing that I need to highlight is that I was using by that time I was using a very huge tent, so much that people they thought I, I got, um, um, the whites are behind me. Mm. They they were really thinking that I'm sent by by the whites by the apartheid regime. Yeah, because the the whites when could not enter the, the township. Mm. But in fact, it was my tent that was donated from Bonke mm. with a good motive because he was leaving South Africa mm. and the trucks and everything. But it was difficult. Mm. But I remember in the crusade that I had in Namibia in a stadium in a place called Oshakati. Mm-hmm. It was in that crusade when God said, "Leave what you are doing, close the crusade, go home. There's fire in the country." Mm. I went back to South Africa. When I came here, I went to fast for 21 days mm. alone, praying. And then God said, "South Africa is dying. Focus the next two, three years in South Africa, mm. from city to city, and preach message of hope mm. to your people who are dying." When I finish, when I when I finish the fasting, the Lord said, "Go to Sibuke," mm. and it was just after people were killed in there was a massacre here in Sibuke. Mm. in Sibuke. Uh and there was sort of like careful people that were not allowed to walk after seven o'clock. Mm. Then I went to, to I went to the people to request a place to put a tent. These guys, because it was the whites, they said I must they, they gave me a place. And I realized that the place they gave me was in front of the hostel mm. where you could not walk, you were killed. They put me there. Next to Sibuke hosp- hostel. Just on the door. You cross this the, the street, the, mm. the road, It's next to the, the, the fort, mm. and they know everybody know that you could not be there. And it was after many people were killed in the night mm. vision, mm. and here yeah, the people were killed all also in massacre. I came that time. Hmm. I had to pray. I had to seek the face of. I had to go. I, I had to look for intervention. Mm. I had to go to the mountains and pray. I had to pray that the angels should, will come and protect me. Hmm. And then I went to I went to say, okay. People were crying tears, crying for me because they all thought I'm going to die mm. first day. But it was one of the highlights of my life, mm. that crusade. The way God turned the hearts of the people. Mm. And I was amazed that there were groups like Gata Freedom Party, There was streets of street what what mm. there was uh, there was a, there was ANC there was uh, also 
uh, uh, the, the group of national party, the, the, the whites. Mm-hmm. These people, I did not know whom to fear. Because in our meeting, we were called by, by these groups for the meeting. Mm. The, the, the group in the hostel called, called us, Ngata mm. They said, Bafana, 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 We went to the ANC, the Ngata Tropeke, Bafana, 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 The street guys, Bafana, 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 So, everybody said, nobody will touch us. Mm-hmm. We went there. And I'm telling you, it's one of the crusade where so people comes with a gun. Some were coming straight to shoot me mm. because they have their own own thinking about me. Mm. And they fell down, they threw their guns down, they repented. Some are still in the church today. Hmm. It's one of the greatest. Some were coming to grab people while I'm preaching, mm. trying to go and murder them. Mm. And then a, happen, a miracle will happen that when they try to murder this person, they will see it three people with white garments coming, they will leave a person and run. Mm. This person will run back to the tent. Reports after reports that were scaring me. Mm. Us. Or sometimes the group will come and take all instruments. Hmm. The following day, I will be called in, in, a, in, a, in a hostel. I thought that they were going to kill me. I find all, I will find, find all my instruments mm. in, the, in the hostel. Other groups, they chase the Tzotzis. Mm. And they've put the thoughts there with their own traditional handcraft. Mm. Then I would say, I'll pray, I will plead with people, don't kill them. Let's rather take them to the police station. Mm. I was in that that time, every day of my life it was, it was a risk. How long did that crusade in Sabuking last? Twelve days. Twelve mm. days, every night, mm. I had to stand in front of people. I know that... Uh, I mean, I'm from the the area, but uh, I know from several interactions with you, and I think it will be useful for our audiences to share the story of the specific moment in which a person repents and they sort of accept Christ, and then in the process of their confession lead you mm. uh, to say, I need you to see what we do. And then they take you to the graves, uh, graveside. Can can you just tell the story of what you found there? What did you do with it? Yes, uh, I, 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 and I will, you can start from from the beginning of yeah, this man. I will put it just in a, in a nice way. Yes, uh, because the first time somebody, the second time somebody came uh, into the into our, after the service with a big gun. And then this man was ready to shoot. I was with my wife and the team was ready to shoot. And the, the gun fell down. Mm-hmm. And then he took the run away. So we don't know what happened with that guy. But I got a message that somebody has repented in the crusade because he was attempting to kill mm-hmm. us. So he has repented, but he want a private meeting. Mm-hmm. Then we we went there and meet the guy. And then he said, "No, I was I was in the mission because we thought we would disarm the people because the people were throwing guns mm. on the on the on the platform. They were throwing pangas and mm. knives. So, according to this guy, he belonged to a movement that thought." Mm. Or a gang that thought we have been, we have come to disarm our people Eish. while they are killed. Mm. They didn't know the element of retem- repentance. Mm. So after he repented that night, he realized, no, I don't need these things also mm. because now I have Jesus. Powerful. Then when he came to us, oh, he said, no, I've repented, but I want to show you my stuff. I can't bring it here to the crusade. Hmm. It was interesting to go somewhere in the graveyard around the place where I come from. Mm-hmm. And they went to the grave. So the grave, they just push it, something aside, mm. that the, the, the soil. Mm. When they open, inside was, the, the first one was the, these big guns. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know whether it's R or AK, whatever. Mm. But these war guns, mm-hmm. they were packed. They were the grave was as deep as a human being's grave, mm. six feet. Mm. But it was all guns. Mm. They were stored there. And then I said, "Is it finished?" No. I went to the second grave. Yes. Opened the grave, and inside were the hand, the grave, all type of hand grenade. Mm. And when they were busy opening, they said, "We must stay, f- stay far." Anything can happen. Mm. And after that, we came and I saw all sorts of hand grenades. Then he closed it and he said, Bafundis, pray with me. Unfortunately, the pastor that I was with, he was, he's now, he has passed away during the COVID. Mm. Pray for me. I've, I'm saved. What must, what must I do with it? Yes. yes. <laughs> that, was my, that was the most terrible thing. He said, what must I do? Then I said, if I send it, it, I said, bring it to the crusade. Mm. It's going to be a problem. If I said, take it to the whites, the groups, mm. they are going to kill him. Mm. If I say, leave it here, then he must run away. And still he's in danger. He will be looked after. Mm. He will be chased. I said to the guy, Is it yours or are you hired? He said, no, I'm a shop steward. Mm. He told me, who are the owners of this? I said, no, that's not, that's not a problem. Call that man who's in charge. Mm. If you are afraid, bring him to me. Hmm. He brought the guy, but it was not me personally, the pastor that I cannot disclose now. Mm. He went to that pastor Pastor, I told the pastor what to say. He said, mm. this man is saved. This is what we believe. Mm. You know the tent is there. So he's no more going to be in charge of mm. these things because according to us, are the items that we destroy when we receive Christ. Mm. So you go there to the grave, see what you do mm. with what is yours. This one is no more in charge because mm. he must go to the church. That's how the guys was delivered. And I'm talking now, he's still alive. Mm. He's part of the church mm. in the same area. He's an elder of the church. And there was no harm. The owners, they went there. Mm. They took their things. I didn't know where they throw it or what happened with them. It's only God and them, who knows. But we were interested for this soul. Mm. That, that had uh, received joined Christ. Here. Yes. I I I I am uh, I have not heard the story in that detail. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks 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 very much. I um I mean it but it it's also in this 90s period where you say for a sustained 3 years you were preaching in different cities and yes, different towns. Yes yes. It's during that. Yes. And I was that time I was using the gospel fire tent and the trucks and everything mm-hmm. from city to city. But it's this time that yes. you encountered the young Juju. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a year after that. Mm-hmm. Because the, that was 91. Mm-hmm. 91. From there, I went, to, I went to the next crusade, which was in um, uh, Everton North. From Everton North, I went to Clackstop. 92, I went. Hmm. And it was in 92 hmm. when we had one of the most powerful crusades I've never I've ever seen. The whole Limpopo, people were cooking, hmm. were coming with with pots and their families. Around the tent, people would stay there for 14 days. They never went to home. Hmm. Sleeping outside, sleeping in the tent, cooking their food and their families. Hmm. Some were brought dead. On their, on their trailer, on their, on their van mm. from their villages. Pray for them. They stood up, they went home. Mm. It is during that time when I met, I saw, let me not say I met him, mm. I saw the young lion, the mm. Juju, ju- mm. came, came with Mam Kuluake. Mam Kuluake was the one attending. Mm-hmm. So Juju was coming with Mamkulu. Mm. 
Then I remember I I was actually the prayer was not for Juju was mm. for for Coco. Mm. But Coco had an agenda mm. that I've got a small boy that you must pray it for. Mm. Then I, after, after that praying for Coco there, it was not the evening during mm. the day. Then I was I prayed for Juju. I prayed for him. They brought him in. I prayed for him, and then he went back with 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 Coco. Why why were they asking for you to pray for him? Did they? Did they I, did I just they remember what he said. Maskolo and a car he's starting to drink. That was the thing. So we it was it was normal for us to pray for children. Like mm. And he's drinking. Mm. So to us, it was it was what we do normally do mm. with parents bring their children. Mm. We did not know the significance of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Why do you still remember this specific child to this day? It's because when when I heard of him, mm. the memory came back. I see. The memory came back because mm-hmm. I know Oko, 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 even after the crusade, mm-hmm. after the, all the times I've been going to Sichiwa, mm-hmm. I, I used to know Oko, Oko, mm-hmm. Oko the, the, the grandmother. Mm-hmm. So when this when this man started to come up, mm-hmm. I started to realize that I know him from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, the guy who was with me mm-hmm. in the crusade, who was a crusade organizer, mm-hmm. He's the one who quickly remember that this this guy is the one who we pro- you prayed for him. Mm. Then it came back to my memory. Say I born in Kos. Say to me, say in Kos. Glory to God. Uh, the president shared, in fact, this story to me, mm. uh, and I think maybe at a different opportunity, uh, the EFF's podcast broadcasters may want to throw this testimony mm. uh, as part of um, uh, our conversation here. But, you know, he, he did indicate that uh, he had this moment. He tells it mm. much more vividly because, I mean, I think being younger, mm. um, so the facts indeed are the same. But what I found interesting, uh, when we started the EFF. And there was a conversation about who's going to pray mm. at our founding conference uh, in Margana. Mm-hmm. And the president said, do you know the way I speak? Hmm. The way I deliver my message. I was inspired by Ralo Holela. Hmm. 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 Can't we find him, comrades? And we say, you are from the Val. Oh, mm. Can't you find mm. Mm. Murudi to come and pray in America? And that's how we got in touch with you mm. to request you to come in America. But I mean, I'm saying the there's an anecdotal uh, addition to, mm. to that mm. that mm. President said, but also the the the, the speaking. I used to like the way that Dara Lokholela delivers mm. uh, a sermon and was inspired uh, in that sense. And uh, then later on shared the story. It was not during that time. Yeah, yeah. Shared the story about I was taken there to be prayed for and all of that. But you, you came. Mm. You didn't even hesitate when we spoke to you. You, you said, I'll come. I mean, this was... Uh, a year after the massacre in Marikana happened, mm. Mm. you came and um, and you prayed in our founding rally in Marikana. Uh, do you have anything to say? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, it really <laughs> it really took me by surprise because uh, first thing I I knew I knew I knew uh, the president mm. and. Uh, I also listened to him many years when he was still a, a youth leader. Mm. That's where I, 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 I realized his charisma. You know how mm. he talks, and I, you know, if, if, if even by that time I didn't know more much about 
the history at the back but mm. i could feel that when he speaks mm. uh, there's part of me that like mm. him. so when i was called to be honest eff was not known that, mm. that much yes i thought it was uh, it was a prayer it was a small thing mm. and i was in limpopo by that time mm. i had to leave the big conference that i had at at mampat mpahlele mm-hmm. I drove straight to Marikana mm. and uh, on my way the Lord spoke to me about mm. about EFF but I did not I I did not know because I did not, I've never seen it anywhere except hearing that is EFF but you know we were not used to another mm. another political parties mm. we only know one political party or either the opposition mm. so when I came there really i realized that you no know, it's something bigger than i i thought about mm. because it was the whole mountain was great was 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 great mm-hmm. but what encouraged me is what the lord said mm-hmm. i saw a vision when i came into the stage mm. of a baby wrapped with with napkins and then i heard the, the lord saying to me this is a baby don't worry you are coming to a baby but inside that baby there is a giant mm. don't don't rush but it's a giant you will open your eyes this gi- this baby will be a giant mm. that will scare everybody mm. then i i managed to stand my ground on the stage and say a few words but i'm telling you i was i was in the wonderland because i didn't know i could i could meet so many people i could have so many people i can see juju that i know mm. in front of so many people mm. the excitement that was there the the people coming there it was caring mm. it was caring it was caring and and uh, i felt that what i saw it's something not of my time but it's for something for the future mm. and then that's it's it is that day that make me to to realize that yeah this thing it's, it's something for for this nation very interesting that the murud what i would like to share is that for us margana was a huge drama uh, and um, you know when we were celebrating the 10 years of the anniversary a lot of stories were coming to our minds we had to go back to the place remember it was the valley mm. in which the post democratic government did to the black miners what apartheid used to do to them massacre so the idea was we were here to pick up the spear to fight for economic freedom because they were fighting for a minimum wage of 12500 a democratic government should be able to resolve that bring the company the miners and the one table uh, and no they sent police so we said no let's go back there then we agree murudi ga lo kholela is going to pray well how fitla eh and then you take platform we know you to to be this powerful preacher who will be able to speak to thousands of people and we like murdi today was he terrified was he scared we could see that you are not yourself mm. and we've not had this conversation for 11 years mm. i didn't know until today hore you also found the moment because uno it took said it say you didn't know what the EFF is about and then mm. boom you're like this is big mm. on the one hand and on the other you take a platform and you enter into a a moment where you are seeing a vision mm. very disorganizing it may seem mm. 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 we didn't know but we all saw re hey, muruti is not himself mm. i mean the subsequent meetings in which you prayed for us you you were your usual self marco marigana le ra re ai mohlomong mohlomong e mo ambushitse crowd here because indeed it was a massive crowd mm. and of highly 
agitated. All those workers that were were there, survivors of the Margana massacre, were there in huge numbers. The pain was still fresh. And the message of the EFF plucked into the continuation of that struggle and the continuation in general of the fact that political freedom is not enough. We have to have the land, the mines must work for our people, the banks must be able to work for our people, and so on and so forth. And there is the man of God. But also juxtapose it with the fact that Unorera uh, in 91 and just after the Sibuking massacre mm. and just before the Bipadong massacre mm. uh, in that uh, so the two moments are in a way related but for us that's how we experienced you at the Margana stage it was really a mixture of a lot of things mm. because, uh, because uh, honestly you, I did not. I was coming from a very powerful conference, mm. and uh, I know the people who called me, like yourself and, mm. and, and, and the president, but I didn't know the the, the what you call the the crowd. Mm. And also, it was my intention to go there. Mm. I was planning a crusade there also. in Marga. Yes, mm. I was negotiating a crusade there after that. Mm. What happened? So. It was a mixture of, yeah, this is what I wanted to do here. Mm -hmm. But this is in a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't preach like preaching in the tent. I need mm -hmm. to encourage this thing. Mm -hmm. My focus was not really to the people, mm -hmm. unfortunately. My focus was upon what is given, what is born. Mm -hmm. That was my prayer. Mm -hmm. This is uh, there is something that is born. Mm. more than the people. I know that the people, you were going to say something to them and, mm. and the people were excited. I've never in my life mm. seen an excitement like that. <laughs> I've never, in fact, the, when, the, when, the, when, the pre, when, when, when the president came in, when mm. they started Juju, mm. it was, you could be scared if mm. you don't know. But I was amazed how it's me alone who don't know something that people know like this. Mm. But I played a role of say yes is something that is being born. Mm. And uh, also the confirmation from God that mm. take care of a baby. Mm. That's why even after that, mm. my heart to care of the baby mm. has been started there. Thank you so and much. I cannot Marcus. explain more than that. Absolutely. But, yeah. But in your whole evangelical movement, how many, if you were to estimate, how many people do you think you brought to the kingdom of God in terms of your evangelism? Like the altar calls, when they join together through the gospel fire organization or ministry, as well as other endeavors, uh, shall I say, since... Uh, since that moment when you were in the prayer meeting mm -hmm. and then uh, you heard the voice and people are like, we didn't hear anything. From there up until now, how many people do you think you brought to, to the faith? Uh, I think I need to talk like a, an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Evangelists are people who are saying millions. Mm. Uh, I can't speak scientific really. Mm. Mathematically, it can't. Because this is what I saw in the dream. Mm. I was crying like, Udimu, where are the people that I've said, I, I preached to? Mm. I walk in a big tent. There was no roof. Mm. There was nothing. I saw other tents within the tent. Mm. was within my tent and then I wanted to fight those people to remove their tent mm. it's my tent then eventually the Lord said no it's not your tent but they are pitching in your tent mm. and I look around I realize all the people were pitching tent within my tent now God is said, said to me I'm, I've called you to what cannot be numbered mm. And then I did not understand. But as I'm talking now, 
I'm saying millions. Mm. I'm honest. Mm. I'm say I'm honest. If I can say 10,000 10, 10, 10 millions, mm. still I won't be perfect because mm. remember I had some I I have I've crusaded that I did it even outside the country where mm. I would have 60,000 hmm. people in the stadium in Nairobi and I was in Uhuru Park mm. where we had 100,000 people. I was in Uganda when we would have around 40,000. Mm. And uh, in South Africa, we had stadiums like Sisaramabod, oh, where we'll mm. pack the stadium, many stadiums in South mm. Africa, and, and Botswana, mm. the biggest stadiums are say, Samo, how Lobazi, mm. packing the stadium of 40,000 people. And it will, it, I can simply, I can simply say millions have, mm. God, have has come to the kingdom of God. Because of your Because sound of, of the sound of this ministry. Mm in different times and seasons. And I do not want to put aside the, the role of the media. Mm -hmm. I've been on TV since 2004 mm -hmm. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And then I've been in different medias of, of every country where I go. I'll be in the media for that period. Mm -hmm. And the many, many messages comes from people who are saved. Be mm -hmm. Before that, my cassettes mm -hmm. were transported with trucks, to Lesotho, where Soto was, was, speak, was mm. spoken, Botswana, mm. where Soto was spoken, Limpopo, with mm. trucks. Mm. I was just getting royalties. My cassette were almost in every house. Every place people will, will pray, will, will listen to the cassette. I think in more than uh, 20, 30 years. Because mm. as I'm talking now, I've got, I have, cause I have messages that are, or, or that are 40 years old, mm. but are still listened by people. They convert it into the modern technology. Mm. So those ones, it was difficult to count them. Mm. Those that I'm speaking like, like Samson's story, mm. those he killed when he died were more than those that he killed when he was alive. Sitting and now, radio as well. Radio, and now it's worse because mm. of the media that you have now mm -hmm. where I'm sitting. Because all over the world, mm. there's no borders. In our mini, in our minis, one service in the church, in the church or crusade that we are coming from now in Mayaton, people will call from Arabia, mm. watching us and saying, oh, "I've heard the message." Mm. United Kingdom, mm. Cuba, Germany, they will say, "I'm listening to the message." Mm. Some they said, "I got saved. Mm. I'm from this place, from this place." So, it's safe to say millions. <sighs> Uh, just the question before the last one. Okay. Your family seems uh, very involved in the ministry. Uh, just to confirm, how many children did you have? Do you have four? Four children, yes. And then Semi Ralo Cholela is uh, the firstborn. That's the firstborn. And Semi is also now a pastor. And my experience of pastor's children is not a very good one. Mm. <laughs> they are often self-entitled, spoiled brats mm. that uh, go the opposite. Mm. But Semi is a, a pastor after you. Mm. Uh, what do you make of that? What, is, what do you think happened? Uh, let me say, generally, before I, I talk about him, generally, uh, it's, it's not go a good one. Mm. Because Banabarona, our children, they, they, they grew up, they, they grow up in a very, very terrible environment. Mm. In a sense that even if they do, they try it like any other children. Mm. But people expect too much from them. Because mm. Because mm. And then even if they try, sometimes they are defeated because of people's expectation. Mm. And then it discourages them. Mm. And uh, many of them, when I talk to them, I realize that what happened to their, to, to, what the church has done to their to their pastors, affect them because they see it in the house. I repent. 
from today. I won't speak like that about pastors' children anymore. <laughs> I mean, that's such a rich context. Yeah. Uh, it's. A, I mean, I I repent. Mm. Uh, the, I think it's very convincing. I was bearing now an elderly man who, together with him, we were we were children. Mm. When we we packed the whole auditorium, Nongoye, Nongoye mm. University, mm -hmm. we were there. When everybody has spoken, he has got 41,000 40, 40, mm. 40, churches. Mm -hmm. When they have spoken, they finish. Before I preach, the daughter stood up. Mm. He said, I'm here just to talk, to say to you, Ubaba was a man of God. But there's, there are things that we know that you all of you, you don't know. Mm. And you never mention that. Mm. I mention it and I'm sitting down before the preacher. Mm. He said, I know my father when he comes from this big church and he's alone, he's crying. Mm. And mama is standing there, he can't say anything. When you ask papa, what, why are you crying? He said, I'm from the board meeting. Mm. And I wanted just to tell him, I know him so much. I know him when he comes from the blessed ministry, mm. blessed service. I know him when he cry in the mm. house and he don't want us to see him cry. Mm. Hmm. So let it, when it comes to my son, Sammy, Sammy, uh, I never, I never grow him like my son, spirit, only my son, my child, mm. because I I was told by God when he was still young that he's called. Mm. I, I I I allow him to be next to me mm. in an unusual way, in so much that. He he knows me. If, if somebody says he knows he knows me, he doesn't know me mm. until he passed from saving. He knows me. I'm not afraid to say he can he can say anything, mm. and he will be right mm. about me. And uh, I gave him all the opportunity to to make mistakes mm. and to rectify his mistakes. Mm. And after that, I remain the father. Mm. I, I, I always tell him that. God has called you. I'm your father spiritual and I'm also your father in flesh. Mm. So that when he's weak, mm. he mustn't run away from me. <laughs> Most of the time, we pastor also, we help people to put pressure upon our children. Mm. We want to force them to be like us. Mm. So I never, never wanted Sammy to be like me. Even when he preached, he doesn't preach like me. Mm. He's not an evangelist. He's not aggressive like mm. me. He, I allow he, I allow him to be who he is. Mm. Even when he was a singer all over the country, I would say, "Let's go, sing and give, and, be, and mm. then I will preach." So I must say that uh, that that must be changed. That narrative. Children of pastors are children like any child. Mm -hmm. The only difference is how people treat them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people they they expect too much from them, and sometimes they they are not allowed to play like. Yes. When they play, it's like they expect, if the people that expect Semi to be like, they must understand that Semi is the he's the age of my ministry, mm. actually. So we will be denying him his time to play with other people. And when he get old, then he will start playing instead of being serious. Mm. We deny him to play when he was supposed to play. So I want to see him being a young person. Mm. Loving the Lord. If there's a mistake, let him do a mistake. Let it be corrected. Mm. Like I do to young people. He, he, must be, he must be like another young people. He called me the other day uh, looking for a membership of the EFF. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if I say, me, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> but what I like, he will never do that without, without telling me. Yeah. He tells me all the details. Yeah. Because that's how he grew up. I said, if you follow what you want to be like your father, mm. nobody can stand. Mm. Nobody can, can do anything. No, thank you so much for being an excellent dad. I never had a relationship with my father. And I think maybe that sometimes we misspeak mm. because we don't have the life experience to understand mm. certain relationships ourselves. Mm. Um, before we close, Ndata Muruti, you were part of a generation and in a time when miracles 
were at the center of the gospel. Mm. But uh, isn't it true that this big focus on miracles, particularly for crusaders, uh, evangelists, uh, and the general factory of miracles, one became abused by maybe chance takers, we know this because there are people who are feeding people rats, who are people feeding people petrol in the general factory of, of miracles. What is your view and how does the church allow that situation of abuse to appear? Sometimes that abuse includes sexual harassment and sexual violence on children and women. You would see videos circulating of preachers uh, asking women to be naked, play with their breasts and so on and so forth in the idea of miracles. You are a famous in particular, a well-known as a man of God that was praying for the sick uh, and the sick would be healed, delivering people from mental illness uh, or demons or whatever the case of their uh, me mental state of affairs would be. What do you say to that distortion, that degeneration? What's your view? Mm. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Graham. I think the first thing that we can look at before we come into deeper into this, we must check that from the Bible in the New Testament, where do we get this authority of doing miracles? We get it from the Great Commission. The Great Commission says, go ye into all the world mm -hmm. and preach the gospel. This science shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. You shall pray for the sick and they shall be healed. I think the problem is misplacing the gift of God in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Miracles were not meant for the people who are not going. Hmm. Because miracles are indicators that God is up to something. Mm -hmm. Miracles were not created for church service. Mm. Were created for going out to the world, confirming mm. the word. Mm. Today, the word, the problem, the word is confirming miracles. Mm. An actual fact, there is a distortion, as you say. People think that it is the miracles that will confirm the word. Mm. Actually, in the Bible, it, the miracles must confirm. After the way a word has spoken, it must be followed by miracles for the unbelievers. Mm. Actually, miracles are not for the church, mm. but miracles must be done by the church mm. to the, the world mm. because it is a bait that brings people to the word. Mm. Miracles are not bringing people to Christ. Mm. Nobody will bring somebody to Christ. That is why in the Bible, you'll find false prophets, false apostles, false teachers, mm. false pastors, but you'll never find false evangelists. Hmm. Because an evangelist is somebody who, who connect a human being with God. You mm. can't fake relationship mm. of divine and, 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 and human. Miracles were done for those who are evangelizing the world. Mm. That when they speak, God confirm mm. their word that they speak from the word of God by miracles. Now, all of a sudden, we took over the, way, the miracle side. We placed them in the wrong way. The, most of the people who are doing false things are not real evangelists. Mm. They are in another offices of the church, like pastors, mm. 
mm. some like like teachers mm. they, but they are doing what was supposed to be done in the Ellis Park stadium and anywhere in the world mm. for instance i make an example of preaching in Mauritius island i preached to to another religion of hinduism they mm. laughed at me when i preached they didn't hear what i'm saying but after that i made an altar call nobody came to the altar call but the moment i say is there anybody sick here mm. who need to see jesus doing miracle they lifted their their hands mm. i only took the blind one who was blind and one who was deaf i prayed for them and i shout loudly and say in the name of jesus deaf ears i command you to be open it was instantly open mm. she jumped in the hindi language speaking that i'm healed i'm healed I'm the another one was blind immediately she jump he jumped and i'm healed i'm healed i'm healed after that i said who, those who love this jesus they want to make him lord come the whole building was saved <laughs> we had six churches established in the island mm. after 10 days crusade mm. where we were demonstrating power to the heathen the unknown people the, mm. the people who does not know god Mm. demonstrate power the same thing that we do do in the church of people falling down standing up it works outside the countries because when you lift up your hands somebody jump mm. it's what we do i was in plain mayo where there was a certain place where they were not allowing anybody to preach they throw stones i preach and somebody attacked me i did the same thing lift up my hands and say, in the name of jesus the person stood up and he fell down like a dead person mm-hmm. the island came to the lord and received jesus mm. and that day i had a very big party that the pastor did it for me mm-hmm. because they said that was a place that you cannot enter mm-hmm. i want to say that all these miracles that are being done in the church it is a gift misplaced mm. we are battling with a misplaced gift mm-hmm. things that sometimes are right It's not everybody who doing it who is for, who is a false prophet some mm. they do a right thing but in a wrong place mm-hmm. now if you do a wrong place you will end up for instance if i do miracles every sunday in the mm. church i will be tired also mm. and the people they will get used to me mm. then it will force me to add the spices so that they mm. keep on coming that's when it will go now to the reds because mm. the mirror it will be exhausted mm. you, you do it everything same people because miracles were done to different peop- crowds mm. you go this way you somebody stood from standing from which you go as an evangelist elijah did the miracles he went out he ran mm. away prophets of god were running away after the miracle mm. they don't we sit they don't they were not sitting with celebration so miracle is not in your estimation something you like turn a sunday service into uh, where it's like a show now it's, yes yeah mm. but maybe then doesn't it account for the fact that when you place the miracle before then you produce weaker saints in relation to the knowledge of the faith that's right mm. miracle if you place him in in front of the word mm. the people believe they rely on the miracle That's why when your miracles goes down mm. you lose them. Mm. Because what keep the people is the way. Is the way. The the miracles in the church it's fine. Mm. But it falls under this word that says if anybody among you is sick mm. among you is sick let them be healed. Let mm. them, let the, the people of the, the leadership lay hands on them. Mm. Praying for the sick is not a problem. But seeking to make a show of miracles mm. lead to false miracles. Mm-hmm. because if you do it more than three weeks people will get used to and they will end you will end up having to add your own stuff mm-hmm. then it put witchcraft ndatemuruti ananias ralkholela i want to thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to share your life with us here at the EFF podcast lewilo huminahani uh, on behalf of the audiences but also us as an organization we are in the 2024 election year and we have a man of god with us before we go 
uh, we would like to make a prayer request. Please, can you bless us for these elections, but also pray for our audiences that Mudimulena Abashonol of Fate. Just before we conclude, can we conclude this with uh, that prayer request? Uh, you granting it for us, unless Muruti has a different message that he wants to cover. Otherwise, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest thing is the Yes, 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 yes. We can go straight to prayers. Mm -hmm. I think it will be it will be good for me to pray for the people. Thank you. The pastors who have been watching me, children mm -hmm. of God, the Christians, mm -hmm. people from different religions, and even children of the pastors, mm -hmm. everybody whom we have touched in this journey. Yes. I want to pray for him. Please, Dr. Murati. If you allow me to pray, I'm sitting down, sit fine. It's fine. I'll pray. I'll, I'll pray, pray like this. And then, Heavenly Father God, after such a great and wonderful time that we have spent in this building, O oh Lord, with Dr. Mbuisen in Lozi, interviewing me. Lord, I pray for those who are watching me. I pray that it might be stories of yesterday. But we pray, Lord, that this simple journey of an ordinary man of God may be a blessing to somebody who's still struggling on his way to fulfill the divine calling, to fulfill the dream of the Father. Oh, dear Lord God, some are leaders watching me. Some are just about to throw the towel. Some are about to quit from what they've been doing. Some are saying life is useless. But I pray, oh dear Lord, the mercies that I've seen for years, the blessing of longevity in the ministry, through the storms of life, through the valleys and the mountains, through the giants and the lions and the fire of Babylon. But Lord, I pray that this grace will fall upon those who are watching me right now. That you shall enter their houses, their homes, their families, their lives, their business, their careers. That you shall be God upon them. You shall help them. Your favor shall be upon their lives and strengthen their life that has been destroyed by evil of this world. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Pastors in different churches. I know some are coming out of COVID-19 with brought paralysis upon a lot of institutions in this world. Some decided closed their churches and they are just living. They are just doing an ordinary work. I pray that, oh dear Lord, that brought them, bring them back into their calling, Father God. Activate their anointing. And may they praise you forever and ever. Christians, I'm praying, oh dear Lord God, that you raise the church to be the salt of the earth and to be the city that is on the hill and to be the light of the earth that will never be put under the table, but shining for all those who are in the house. I pray for the South African leadership in the church that, oh God, that we will run forward as you promised that upon this rock I'll build my church that even the gates of hell shall not prevail. Lord, we pray for power to go against forces of darkness and to win this country to back to the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord and I thank you and I bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to stand now and pray for 
this organization that has afforded me the opportunity mm -hmm. to come to their studio. Dear Heavenly Father God, I pray for EFF. I pray for this organization that started from nothing. Lord God, that started like a baby that was thrown out in the book of Ezekiel. When the Lord said, I, when I passed by, I saw you rolling in your blood. I say, leave, you are rolling your blood. You shall rise up and you shall cover the nations. Lord, I pray for them. I pray for them for this time in which we are living. That you raise them, almighty God, to be leaders who can lead your people into righteousness. Lead your people where the lives of people can change, where the lives of people can be better. I pray, O oh Lord God, that be with them, Lord. I release the power of heaven. For you have said, Lord, in your word, you raise whomever you want to raise. You put down whomever you want to put down. That you is yours in God in your own sovereignty. You determine and nobody can stop you. I pray, EFF, that God will be with you in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for Julius Malema, the president. I pray him for him that you hold him by your right hand. You touch his heart. You touch his health. You touch his family. You touch his, his, his vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, dear Lord, we thank you. For the time we spend with them in this office. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand up, South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run, South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a covert thing.